the internet. Welcome back for another update on the Nissan Sentra SER rally car project. You might notice we are outside on this chilly, breezy Michigan day. It's not quite spring here yet in mid-Michigan, um, but uh, the snow's gone. Meanwhile, there's people down in Florida on vacation where it's 82 degrees and sunny, or posting pictures on Instagram about the tulips that just bloomed in Colorado. It's still gloomy here, but that's all right. I prefer the gloomy weather as it matches my bubbly personality. The reason I'm outside instead of in the lab is because earlier I had rolled what was formerly the scrap SR motor out of the pile and uh, loaded it onto this hood so I can more easily transport it to the other side of the shop. This is going to be the block that I'm going to tear down and use for mock-up when we take it up to TRF for skid plate fabrication. But while we're here, I'm going to explain the other project I've got. This is the stamped steel lower oil pan, the cast aluminum upper oil pan, and this assembly bolts to the bottom of the block. The reason that is important is because the Infinity engine that came out of the car has a different oil pan set up for some reason or another. Um, when the previous owner had his off and wrecked the car, uh, it did damage the oil pan. Uh, his initial plan was to repair it, but when the replacement showed up, it was for the Nissan version of the SR20DE instead of the Infiniti version. Um, so he just repaired the damaged oil pan enough to get the car on and off the trailer. It'll probably be fine for racing with. But if I ever have any issues in the future and need to replace that again, it's just going to be more difficult to uh, source replacement parts. So it'll be easier to just swap these parts out now while the engine's out of the car. It allows for better serviceability in the future as well. Uh, I'm going to throw some time lapses together over the next couple days because I don't have a lot of time today or over the weekend to build a lot of content for the video. Um, so hopefully uh, it uh, looks continuous and isn't choppy and silly looking. We'll find out how it turns out after the uh, update at the end of the video. All right, we'll get into it. See you later. Okay, that's going to wrap up this edition of the vlog. It's been a few days now since I started this episode. I haven't had any big chunks of time to de dedicate to the project, so I've just been coming out a couple hours at a time over the last few days to knock stuff out. Um, got a lot of work done, had a minor setback with the oil pan project. So that engine I dragged out of the scrap pile is actually an SR20 DET from a front wheel drive application, either a Bluebird or some other Japanese or Australian car that was never offered here in the States. Um, the problem is it has a narrow block. 
so the upper oil pans are not transferable between the US front wheel drive SRs and any of the DET models. Let's take a quick look here and I'll show you what I was talking about. So you can see the crankcase here is uh, kind of curved in a little bit. That's not typical of what I've seen with SRs, either the rear wheel drives or these NA front wheel drive engines. You can see over here, same, same side, but it's like straight down. It's probably hard to see because of the lighting, but anyway, that's, that's what's going on with that. Fortunately, I have another block, well, a whole complete engine actually, over behind the pile of tires. Um, so I'll be harvesting parts off of that one to complete the oil pan project. So just a little setback, nothing big. Uh, also got the power steering modifications done. I disassembled the rack and cut the inner piston that separates either side of the power steering system. You could probably look up a YouTube video on how power steering works. Anyway, I made the necessary modifications to unpower the rack so it's no longer hydraulically assisted. Um, I still need to go back and weld up the caps from the hoses, like the hard lines that I disconnected. Uh, I just put the the fittings back in place, but they're open, so I gotta go back through and weld all those shut. Uh, I'll fire up the welder next time probably and knock that out. Otherwise, the new K-member arrived and that's in the car. Uh, attached the lower control arms, got the steering rack re reinstalled. Aside from the tie rods, let's take a quick look at that too. So you can see lower control arms are back in. Steering racks back in, K members all in there. So that was good progress. It was good to see that go back in. No more broken bolts. But yeah, you can see here, these fittings are still open. So I will weld those shut both on the rack and at the valve body. There's two sets from the hard lines. Hopefully, you can see that. I'm not going to shoot this take again. So if. Uh, you can't see it, sorry. Anyway, uh, yeah, so that's what's done. Uh, coming up, we still need to install the cross member. I'm still waiting on some tools and some parts for doing the power distribution project. Uh, my buddy's back from vacation, so maybe we'll get the transmission out to his shop to do the LSD install. And there's the oil pan. There's still a lot of work to get done, and I will keep plugging away Oh, one thing, the tie rods aren't installed because I'm upgrading those. I was tinkering around with the S13 uh, steering rack that I had out in the scrap pile. I'm a bit of a hoarder. And uh, anyway, I, th I figured that the inner and outer tie rods might be interchangeable between the S13 and the B13. And it turns out they are. I don't know if this is something other Sentra guys have done or not, but since the S13 and, and B13 parts are interchangeable. That means all of the normal upgrades you would do to a 240SX in the steering rack, you could do to the B13 also. So I've got inner and outer tie rods coming from a 96-ish Maxima. So they're going to be a little beefier tie rod. So hopefully we won't have any issues. Not that there were issues before, but I'm um, just going to strengthen that up while I've got it all tore apart. I had to take it apart anyway, so why not upgrade, right? Anyway, thanks for checking it out. I'll get this video uploaded shortly. Check out my Facebook and Instagram. And stay tuned for another episode of the Tri-City Evolution Rally Team's Sentra SCR Rally Car Project. Thanks for checking it out once again. Like, subscribe, share, comment, all that jazz. And I'll see you next time here in Dexter's Lab.